Hey guys, welcome back to lesson number 13. Uh, from now on I'm going to only teach you some high yield points for the IMAT and the rest of the points you can study from different places and from the study planner and the Pearson books. The lesson I'm going to give you are very high yield and specific for the IMAT exam. Before I begin I would like to encourage you as always to download our new app in order to practice questions similar to the IMAT exam and to have some kind of sense before solving the actual previous past papers. So let's begin. The first lesson of biology I'm going to give you is about cell membranes. Before we are going to dive in into cells, I'm going to give you some sense behind the cell membrane and the different cell organelles. After that, we are going to explain and to talk about how the cell is working as a whole. But today we are going to talk about cell membranes. Anyway, a cell has a membrane which is defined by being semi-permeable. Semi-permeable means that some molecules can diffuse through the membrane, but others can't. And for the others that can't go through the member membrane, we have specific channels or carriers in order to take from the extra to the intracellular membrane, or vice versa. If we zoom in into the cell membrane, we can see that the cell membrane is made out of many different phospholipids, many phospholipids. a double layer of phospholipids. And if we will zoom on one of those phospholipids, we can usually see that the phospholipid is made out of a glycerol backbone which holds two fatty acids and contain a phosphate group. This side of the phospholipid is very, very hydrophilic. And this side of the phospholipid is very hydrophobic. The reason that the phosphate group had is so hydrophilic is because it's charged, it has a charge. So it attracts water molecules, which is the definition of hydrophilic. And the fatty acids are hydrophobic because they don't attract water molecules. For this reason, and we are going to talk about in our thermodynamic and chemistry lesson in the future, we can expect that spontaneously the phospholipids, many, many different phospholipids inside a water glass, for example, will take the shape of a vesicle or a cell. A double membrane phospholipid bilayer. The hydrophobic chains will interact with each other and the phosphate group will interact with the water outside and inside the cell. When we have a molecule that it is both on one side hydrophilic and on the other side it hydrophobic, we call the molecule amphipathic molecule. Please remember for the IMAT exam the structure of the phospholipid and the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane and definition of amphipathic molecules. If we take and quickly draw a part of the phospholipid bilayer of the cell that we zoomed in on, We can see that 
small non polar molecules will pass easily like oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out the membrane small polar can pass through the membrane but not as easily as the non-polar molecules because the non-polar molecules so we have the carbon dioxide which is a non-polar molecule interacting with the hydrophobic zones and easily pass through the membrane but when we have for example water which is very polar molecule with hydrogen bonds we can see that the water won't be able to pass the lipid bilayer so easily because the charge of the phosphate groups will force them out of the lipid bilayer so while it is possible for small polar molecules to pass through the membrane it will pass way more slowly than small non-polar molecules and this is another thing you need to remember for the IMAT due to this fact we have carrier channels for water called aquaporins which allow water to pass easily through the membrane and diffuse from one side to the other side large non-polar molecules will also be able to pass and diffuse to one side and to the other side but like small polar molecules it will occur way more slowly than small non-polar molecules large polar like glucose for example won't be able to pass the lipid bilayer and also charge ions like chloride sodium and amino acids which also sometimes has charge also won't be able to pass through the membrane because they have a charge so this is very very important to remember for the amount and it was just a general introduction for cells and cells membrane in general i'll see you in the next video